Inkosi Bambata was born in 1866. He was only 13 when he saw the independent Zulu kingdom refuse to bow to the Natal colony's demand to open up their territory to capitalist investment. In 1879, the British waged war on the Zulu nation. Whilst under the leadership of the last Zulu king to be recognized by the Natal colony, Tleshwai. The consequence of the defeat that followed for Africans was immense. Perhaps the greatest casualty was our African way of life, the way we worked and shared the land. After the murder of Tleshwayo, his rightful heir, Dinuzulu, was unable to stand up to the British. He was prevented from taking his place as king. Instead, he was exiled to St. Helena for opposing British annexation of Zululand. By the time of his return in 1897, the Zulu kingdom had been fully incorporated into the Natal colony. The authorities watched his every move, but to his people, he would always be king. The undermining of Dinuzulu was felt very keenly by chiefs all over Natal, for his situation mirrored theirs. Some chiefs refused to stay quiet. Among them was Chief Bambata. The land that had been set aside for Bambata's Zondi people was decreased without their consent, as the Mvoti area was opened up to settlement by white farmers. By the 1890s, many of the Zondi were living on white farms, and these farmers were now demanding rents. In addition, the government was trying to impose how many cattle African people could own. The result, our young men forced to seek paid work in the white economy. Each advancement of the white settler on our territory was permanently erasing our African communal life under the Yamakosi, the very basis of our survival as an independent people. <laughs> 